Crows, crows, crows. I have a lot of crows where I live. They're pretty beefy. They're big, big birds. They've already lost. They just don't know it. Here from behind! <gasps> Stop looking at me! We'll get him next time. Save it for the enemy! We've lost control of the command post. Yay! Yay! Primates are notorious for their incredibly broken intelligence stat, which grants them access to incredible advanced techniques such as tool use, coordinated team strategies, and even bartering and trade. But primates are not the only faction in the game with a high intelligence stat. Cetacean, Cephalopod, no. and Birdmates also commonly opt not to spec into powerful damage dealing abilities, and instead invest into leveling up their brain power skill tree. Ooh. While this does seem like a risky choice, leaving the player more vulnerable in direct 1v1 combat. Oh in my actuality, god! This often results in a much less risky playthrough, as the player's intelligence opens up more options for them to progress that don't require winning in combat. This is especially true of the bird faction, as their ability to fly already allows them to- He's so bold! The cat could freak him up, man! He's like, no, I'm gonna peck this bitch in the ass. ...quickly escape most unfavorable peck. combat encounters. Today, we're going to discuss one of the two main intelligence-centered bird builds, the faction that contains crows, ravens, and magpies, the Corvid. Didn't we uh, watch an entire video that explained how crows, like, makeshift their little tools on with branches? It was so cute. Big piss. Hi, Magic prophetic! Piss. Hi! <gasps> Carmen, thank you! Thank you, Carmen. The poop poking and scooping sticks. Yeah, with the maggots and the larva. Yeah, it's cool. This video is going to focus mostly on crows as an example. Crow. But generally, what I say in this Crow. video should apply Crow. to most Corvids. Yes. First, let's discuss their stats, as well as the abilities and strategies that exemplify them. We'll begin with their stealth stat, which Corvids aren't particularly excellent in. The most popular Corvid skins are either Jet Black or Piebald, neither of which grant the user- I thought these were magpies. I Wait. I thought magpies were their own thing. They are? Oh. Corvid is a genus? Oh, 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 I'm, I'm dumb. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't understand. I thought it was a different, like, it was the same species, but a different color. He's wearing a wife beater shirt. Yeah. yeah he's, he looks, he looks smart. These are that strong of a stealth bonus. In fact, in snowy areas, jet black feathers are actually one of the least effective choices when trying to remain hidden. A dark appearance is most effective as camouflage at night. At but night. But crows and other corvids are Ninja. not nocturnal builds so they aren't really gaining this benefit from it. Now, granted, stealth typically isn't all that important for birds, given how agile and Ooh. vigilant they are. Plenty of other high-tier avian builds, like for example parrots, parrots, are arguably some of the least stealthy birds in the game, and they do just fine. You could even argue that corvids are even less stealthy than their black feathers initially appear, as their iridescence actually makes them even easier to see for certain other players, yeah, typically other birds. Yeah, they are shiny. Ultimately, I think it's safe to say stealth is not an important part of the game. At least nowhere near as important as it is for ambush predator builds like an owl. The main oh predators a crow needs to worry about are raptors. Yeah, and because of the raptor's keen eyesight ability, it's unlikely having a higher stealth stat would make much of a difference. Oh my anyway. god, this is kind of metal. The crow's defense and constitution stats are fairly average for a bird, which is to say not great. Birds have hollow bones, and their feathers offer fairly little in terms of defense. Feathers do absorb some blunt force damage, but when it comes to slashing and piercing damage... <laughs> oh my god, they're just smacking them! It's nearly useless. And because of their hollow bones, which make them more vulnerable to blunt force damage, the benefit there kind of cancels out as well. Snakes, cats, raccoons, raptors, and dogs all have a high chance of taking a crow out in one hit, so they cannot oh let their god. guard down when interacting with any damage to their abilities. Given that their playstyle necessitates taking some risk, <laughs> crow players definitely wish they had more room for Orange error. Cats, man. Thankfully, their next stat makes it pretty easy to avoid damage. 
The crow's mobility Swift. is a little above average for a mid-sized bird, which is to say, excellent. Birds oh, in general are just extremely agile, both Ooh, on the ground and in the air, making them extremely hard to land and attack on if they see you coming. Some bird builds, like geese and jungle fowl, require significant startup in order to get airborne, meaning yeah, that they mangoes. can't rely on their flight to escape danger if the danger is already right in front of them. Dude, monkeys Crows are, are not one of the monkeys are so brutal. He just snatched that thing is like, yeah, that's my meal. My little chicken. These bird builds. And in contrast, the startup on their flight Rats! has some shockingly broken frame data and allows them to quickly and easily reposition themselves in basically any direction in 3D space almost instantly. This That's makes their sick. ability to dodge attacks one of the best in the entire game and makes what would normally be fairly dangerous positions, Rabin! such as Rabin's right next ass! to a powerful predator, quite safe as long as the Corvid doesn't use any laggy moves. This synergizes well with the Corvid's combat moveset, as we'll discuss in a moment. Wow, wait, Canadian geese are not to be freaked with. And these, <laughs> and these crows are just attacking them. They're since 2v1! Man! Corvids Brave. are blessed with many high stats, but power is not one of them. Their ability to deal damage is one smack, of the smack, weakest smack, in their smack, weight smack. class, as their only attack option is a simple pecking strike. This move has quick Get startup for and one, very little end lag but its damage is egregiously low. Simply attacking with this move will deal minimal damage to anything larger than an insect. Most players will be able to ignore locked, this attack's damage. Locked. However, this doesn't mean a crow's attacks are useless. It just means they've got to be clever about how they use them. They're annoying. That's how they're good at it. They're annoying. Abusing frame data? Yeah, they're really fast. They know when to dodge. They get iframes. A well-placed peck can provoke an attack, and if you're able to move out of the way quick enough, the enraged player will end up being forced to lash out at whoever just happens to be nearby, <laughs> and create so an slow. opening for the Corvid player to capture an objective, steal some loot, or escape trouble. <laughs> it might seem like a jank strategy, but really this is the bread and butter of Corvid gameplay, and can lead to massive swings in advantage. The chance to afflict the enraged status effect scales with the user's intelligence stat. So the reason this strategy works so well <laughs> is that the Corvid's intelligence. <laughs> You're at Waffle House and there's two guys fighting and you fucking sm come over and smack this guy's ass and they start fucking wailing on each other. Can you imagine if that worked the same way? Intelligence stat to is ridiculously a fight. high for a non-primate build. Corvids are tied with parrots for the highest intelligence stat in the entire avian faction. Ew. And in addition to enabling the goading strike moveset, having high intelligence grants Corvids access to a lot of other powerful techniques too, including the ability to Fishing. use tools. Tool use is one of the most notoriously powerful abilities in the entire oh game. Oh my god. And in pros, this is, this so is no less true. By using hook-shaped wooden sticks, yes, crows can score video, kills on this video, this exact one. Grubs that are normally safe from everything Look except for woodpecker attacks. Oh my god! And given how many expensive niche perks woodpeckers need to spec into in order to perform these sorts of drilling attacks, the ability to bypass all of that investment while still gaining the same rewards is a huge boon to the crows. But high intelligence has far more benefits than just allowing crows to copy the success of hyper-specialized builds. Arguably, the most important benefit is team tactics. Crow, wait, go back. Go back. Crow joint, bald eagle joint, crow, 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 crow. Show them why a group of crows is called a murder. <laughs> this is what allows That's baboons cute. to fight off lions, what allows ants to bring down tarantulas, and yeah. what allows wolves to prey upon bison. Numbers. When crows work together, they can capture territory and control points of interest that they'd otherwise be helpless to defend. They can even rescue each other from what would otherwise be guaranteed lethal attacks using a tactic called mobbing. Yeah, get em. Mobbing is a strategy most commonly seen in birds, consisting of bombarding a single target with a barrage of both physical and sonic attacks. On their own, these would be easy to shrug off, but when you're getting pecked at and screeched at from all directions at once, it inflicts heavy physical. Maybe birds have other birds have autism. They're getting sensory overload. They're just calling at him. Ka, 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 ka and psychic damage. This is what allows social corvids, like magpies and crows, to successfully chase away predators several times their size. Ravens, on the other hand, tend not to really need the help as they're large enough Ravens to handle most opponents one-on-one, -on -one, but can still team up in order to lock down a good source of carry-on. Alternatively, they may even ally themselves with wolf players, <gasps> leading them to a carcass and letting them do the work fighting off their competition before Ooh. sharing in the rewards. Let's go! Anyway, that's a basic overview of the corvid build. 
Now let's talk about their matchups. The Corvid matchup chart is heavily dependent on how effective their goading strike and mobbing techniques are goading against a given strike. target. Luckily, because of how high the Corvid's intelligence stat is, the list of targets goading strike works against is quite long. <laughs> it is best against builds with lower intelligence stats. Things like vultures, things like reptiles, and things like rodents. What's more, this technique even works on one of the Corvid's two primary threats, feline builds. Felines! Deadly as cats are, they're often quite reactive and oh easily God. aggroed. So Goading Strike is the perfect tool to redirect their ferocity. This move is admittedly <laughs> less effective against the Corvid's other main concern, raptors. raptors. However, thankfully the goals. mobbing technique is quite effective against raptors. So <laughs> for both of their down. main threats, the crow players have options. The only builds these techniques aren't that effective against are other high intelligence builds, monkeys. such as monkeys and parrots. Because of their extremely strong social bonding and top tier intelligence stat, Parrots are highly resistant to psychic damage and do not turn on. Oh my god, parrots are so cute! Oh my god! ...each other easily. In fact, when pestered by a Corvid, they are likely to defend each other fiercely using their own more powerful beaks and louder shrieks. Shut up! One-on-one, -on -one, they're fairly alone. evenly matched, so it tends to just come down to size. Oh, but shit. in groups, Corvids tend to have difficulty forcing parrots away from an objective. As for monkeys, their higher HP allows them to more easily ignore the pecking attacks of a crow. <laughs> and they're used to getting their tails tugged all the time by their own party members, so a crow doing it is unlikely to provoke a punishable response. Crows and parrots have an interesting dynamic. I've said in previous videos that I believe parrots to be the more viable build. They have higher dexterity with their beaks, their sonic shriek attack is incredibly effective, they're more social, and arguably more intelligent even. And yet, of the two most intelligent bird builds, crows there's no smarter. denying that in the city biome, corvids are much more successful. I think the reason for this is that even though parrots are indeed more powerful on their own, and are better at using most tools than crows are, crows are better at using the most important tools, other players. From provoking attacks and redirecting aggression, to using passing vehicles to deal damage for them and unlock high-value loot, corvids are the best of the best when it comes to using other builds' strengths to cover for their own. He's feeding that dog! ...and shortcomings. Aww. And if the human build's dominance is any indication, so co-opting the strengths of less intelligent builds is one of the strongest strategies you can possibly execute in the game. And it's for this reason that Corvids sit proudly in S-tier. Speaking of builds with a high success rate They're within the city okay, bot, another creature that thrives in cities is the centipede. With their quick, twitchy movement and flat Ew. shape, they have no trouble weaving through all of the nooks and crannies common in urban environments. This is the subject of my next video, which will be out on YouTube in a month or so. Disgusting. However, if you'd like to watch that video right now, you can access it a month in advance on Nebula, the sponsor Nebula. of today's video. Now, many of you have heard me talk about Nebula before. It's the creator-owned platform with no ads, no algorithm, no clickbait, and phenomenal content. Mm -mm -mm. But this time is different. Nebula just underwent a massive overhaul to dramatically improve its UI to make wow. Nebula's premium content easier to find Chat and its Boosky. creator list easier to sort through. We've now got categories you can quickly swipe through to get to the sorts of no things thanks, you're interested YouTuber. in. Hey look, it's the science category. And who's on top? Bum, bum, That's bum, right, bum. it's my original series, bum. Let's Play Outside, an yes, educational show exchange. spotlighting the individual lives of interesting bum, bum. animals, done in the style of a Let's Play live stream. One of the episodes I'm mm -hmm. most proud of features the mantispid, a fascinating insect that has the characteristics of both a wasp no, and a mantis. How does it fare against other common garden insects? Well, you'll just have to check it out to see. I doubt many of you know this Uh, are you gonna release videos early on Patreon or just videos that don't make the cut? No, just videos that don't make the cut for YouTube. I also don't want to spam my YouTube. I have to, like, pace it. But yeah. ...exists. It has been sort of hard to find on Nebula before, despite being exclusive to the platform. But now, I really hope you give it a watch. One of the other new categories on Nebula is News, yeah, which I find really helpful given how complicated geopolitics tends to be lately. Oh Specifically, God. they have this new current events show called The War Room, which is made by the same talented people behind real-life lore and modern conflicts. Much like how the monkey's intelligence helps it avoid being used as a pawn in the crow's plan, knowledge about the defining geopolitics of our time is important to know about so that you are not provoked into a battle that you don't understand. But on a more fun note, one show I've been really Oh, just don't talk about politics. <laughs> Join is Archaeology Quest, a show where scientists compete to see who yourself? can master the art of Paleolithic survival first. 
If this all sounds good to you, you can sign up to Nebula using my link at nebula.tv slash tierzoo, or use the link below, which supports me directly and gets you all this amazing content for 40% off if you choose the annual plan, which adds up to as little as two and a half dollars a month. Thank you all so much for watching, thanks again to Nebula for sponsoring this video, and as always, good luck out there. Yeah, clamptures. Which soap opera?